A loving Father in heaven, we are thankful that we have this opportunity to pause again and to praise you. You are God worthy of praise, and we want this afternoon to glorify you. And we know that you don't need a pat on the back. It's not like we need to tell you or we can tell you anything that you don't already know. You know what is in our hearts. And you know many times those hearts are filled with things that are, do not praise you. And we put on a facade, a face. We say things when in our hearts often we have things that are not glorifying to you. And I just pray that you would cleanse us this afternoon and that your presence might be here to enable us to praise you and that you would receive that praise through the gift of music, through the testimonies, through the lives of the seniors as they complete this leg of their journey, that they would walk and praise you too. Send us your spirit and bless us this afternoon, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So the song is, um, the first song is a song of joy and delight that we're going to share with the bell choir. So this afternoon, we have a special opportunity. The senior class, usually at uh, graduation, we have two activities, special activities that we do. One is junior rec, and one is senior, uh, uh, senior tributes and senior recognition. And this senior class, because we kind of only have an opportunity to do one of the two, they chose, we would rather talk to the juniors than have people talk about us. So they chose to share rather than to have senior recognition. We kind of hated to skip that entirely. And so we're going to have an opportunity to recognize and to thank the Lord for what um, God has been doing in the lives of our seniors. And we're kind of going to take this somewhat in alphabetical order. So um, I would have liked to invite Carla to come on up. She is going to share a few thoughts about Jose, and then we're going to have another uh, tribute, and then we're going to have a special music and a tribute and a special music and a tribute, kind of the rest of the program, just to give us an opportunity as staff to, to thank the Lord and to acknowledge what he has done in the lives of our seniors here. And so we're not going to ask you to come up and sit in the hot speed. I don't see it like we kind of do at, uh, at Senior Rec, but um, we're going to have an opportunity And Jose, maybe since you're behind her, it would be better if you at least sat out here somewhere so that uh, it's not have to, that she doesn't have to turn around. Jose, 
It has been said, knowing a person is like music. What attracts us to them is their melody. And as we get to know them, who they are, we learn their lyrics. This is certainly true for you. My first year at OHA, I didn't really know you that well. I knew that you were very polite and had an outgoing personality. And I remember every time you came to the cafeteria to eat a meal, you'd ask for bread. But it wasn't until I had you in class that I came to realize that you were much more than the polite guy who ate bread at every meal. <laughs> it was such a privilege to have you in three of my classes this year. You always challenged me to think deeper with your thought-provoking questions. Whenever I was um, preparing for a lecture, I would think, what question is Jose going to ask me? And then I would dig deeper and research, try, and try to be ready for your questions. But unfortunately, quite often I had to tell you, I'll get back to you on that. I love how you strive to do your absolute best. You always try for perfection. And while that is a good thing, try not to be hard on yourself when you don't get that perfect score. God only requires us to do our very best, nothing more and nothing less. Remember that next time you get a 98% on a test. <laughs> I know without a doubt that you can accomplish whatever you set your mind to. You have determination and just a tad bit of stubbornness. But most of all, and most importantly, you have a humble and teachable spirit. And those qualities, along with your faith and love for God, can cause you to do great things. Just remember that this world, the world's idea of great things and God's idea of great things are not the same. Take the talents that God gave you, which includes playing the piano, and use them for God. And what you lack, he will make up for in ways that you could never imagine. Remember how sick you were when we left for India? And how on that first night, despite feeling very bad, you got up and you gave a children's story and you did a health talk. I'm sure you were thinking, I don't know how I'm going to get through this night. But you did, and you did it quite well from what I've heard. But that was God working through you and he will do it again and again if you allow him to. I'm really going to miss you, your smile, your cheerful greetings, and even your ideas about how to do things differently. I'm thinking specifically about foods class on that one. But life has to move forward, and I know that God has special plans for your life. Take the things that you've learned here at OHA and go forth boldly and do a great work for God. Stay on the straight and narrow path and keep Jesus as your best friend and you cannot fail. Congratulations. A virtual hug. Um, we have one of our seniors that is not here this weekend and he is graduating as in absentia. As far as I know, this is the first that's ever happened in Washington Hills history. Um, Colton is not here, and we can only do so, mu so much in that we were not able to get Zoom worked out to Zoom him in. Just too much to do and too little time to do in. But we are hoping that he is watching. At least it can be recorded if he's not watching. We are hoping that he is watching. And um, if not, it could be recorded for him to see later on. So I'm going to invite Pastor Powell to come up here. Um, for Colton. All right, it's interesting to uh, talk to one who is not here at the moment. But Colton, I hope you are listening in. And by the way, I could have said something about, I think, all of you guys, seniors, and, and the girls too, I think. Um, but Colton, wow, you have come a long ways. I remember uh, Academy Days, your first Academy Days here. And I remember you're the only student that has ever asked me to drive them from one place of campus to the other. Uh, to drive you down to the IA building because it was such a long journey down there. Uh, yes, uh, you were a little low on endurance and stamina at that point. Uh, and I remember distinctly your alto voice, and I don't mean tenor, your alto voice 
Um, and how, uh, man, you've changed so much in these four years. What, a, what, what an interesting and, and inspiring transformation that I've seen in you, Colton. And I, am, I praise the Lord for it. I remember those first few days here. You were ready to go home. So you sort of fluctuated between, okay, so this will be a weight loss camp, or no, I want to go home. And it was kind of back and forth a little bit. Uh, but you, you stuck it out, and you have grown a lot. And you lost a lot, too, a lot of weight, uh, like 65 pounds, probably. Anyway, I'm proud of you with all of that. Um, it's neat to see how, how you began to see more of your value with God. It was tough at first, I know. Tough for you to see that value. You've had a lot of knocks in life, and I'm grateful to see how the Lord helped you to see your value and and to see that when when you had some of those times when you when you had a challenge you you continued on and you would come down and we've spent a lot of time talking a lot of time uh, studying the Bible together praying together a whole lot and uh, I've taken you on a lot of trips to the ER well at least to the doctor in the ER for some un I won't mention some of those and I wondered if you would ever be able to walk without a boot some of you remember that. <laughs> Man, it's like half the year he's wearing this, this boot around and having to have crutches or something else. Uh, but praise the Lord. The Lord saw you through that, and now you're even canvassing, walking all day long. Uh, I remember uh, teaching you how to shave, because while you've been here, that, that beard started to grow. And... Uh, it was, it was neat to see these things, see you growing in this way. And, and Colton, we really love you. I remember the first, the first uh, icebreaker time. You just sat back in the back. Didn't want to talk to anyone, just sat there. And others came to talk to you, and, and eventually there's been times where you've been like the Pied Piper with some of the, <laughs> with the students grouping around you. And uh, you have some gifts that the Lord can use mightily. And, um, and we love you. I love you, Colton. I believe in you. You can believe in yourself, not for what you can do, but for what God can do through you and in you. I want you to go forward with Jesus. And, you know, I hope to see you here at OHC, but I know the best place for you will be where God leads you, where he tells you to go, because that's the place where you'll be happiest, where you'll grow the most, and be able to be active for the Lord. I can see you doing some kind of ministry for him, and uh, the Lord knows where that is and what all that looks like, but I am uh, thankful to have you as my friend, and and know the Lord will lead you and, and guide you and, and use you. Keep looking to him. And uh, thank you for your friendship. God bless you. We now have another blessing of a violin trio with Nathaniel, his sister, and David.
Hello, everyone. I um, have the have had the privilege to work with uh, the Gillises in many ways, and um, I have the privilege today to appreciate uh, Nathaniel. <coughs> it's not COVID. Um, <laughs> anyways, I can. I can say a lot of things about all the seniors. They have been such a blessing to me. They were my first students, and um, they kind of, when they were my students, I thought that all the students were like these, and um, they were such a great student. So anyways, um, Nathaniel, dear Nathaniel, so, uh, working with you for the past two years has shown me who you are and what you are capable of accomplishing. Today, I wanted to point out five things that I've noticed about you. A positive mindset. I remember many instances, instances when students were talking bad about staff or the school, and you always said something positive or tried to dissipate the conversation by adding, well, but, and you just made the conversation more positive without denying anything true that the students may have said. That stood to me and I've always noticed that every single time. And um, your enthusiasm. Many people may think that you are just a soft, laid back guy, good morning, you know. <laughs> but I have seen you change the mood of an entire freshman, sophomore, or junior class in agriculture multiple times, and that is hard. Um, I can, I can uh, point out to many instances, and that's, that's true. Your energy, OHA is not easy, especially when you have to work under the rain, ice, snow, hot and cold Arkansas weather. But I have seen you work with unbeatable energy and that's why you are on the final, on the finish line. Influence and power. This character trait is not easy to obtain and, and few have it, but I think this is one of your strengths. Leadership, last but not least, you are able to lead without forcing yourself to do so, and that's very important. Alan White mentions that institutions should train the students to be leaders in enterprises, and you are, a, you are visible evidence that God's plan for education is not the best, but the only one. Lastly, I have enjoyed your friendship, and I have learned from you. Aim high, be ambitious for God. There are many that are aiming high for the cause of Satan. Why not for God? Nathaniel, the only reason I mention these characteristics that you have is to tell you that you have a lot in you, and the more you have, the more you have to give. A water is only fresh and full of life, living element as long as it's moving. Bless others, give your all to God, those that talents, those talents that you have are for a reason. God bless you. I'd like to invite the uh, Glass siblings um, to um, share a special number now. Kevin and his sisters looks like.
Affirm. Kevin. A few words I will use to describe him are talented, musical, courteous, studious, creative, intelligent, honorable, and ethical, committed, and godly. Kevin enjoys music and has dedicated his talents to God's glory. Whether playing the piano, the violin, or singing, he does it with gusto. Music is a very important part of his life and who he is. Kevin is creative. His creativity shows itself in many ways. One way I especially think of is in his speaking and writing skills. If you heard uh, Kevin's junior or senior speeches, you can probably more easily identify what I mean. Kevin is ethical and honorable. He has a keen sense of rightness and wrongness, and he always wants to be on the side of rightness. Compromise in those type of situations is not in his vocabulary. He will be true to his convictions, come what may. He's also committed. He'll ponder situations, evaluate what he should do, and then set his mind to accomplishing that task. I'll use Kevin's name to add a few additional attributes. K is for knowledgeable. He's knowledgeable in many, many theoretical as well as practical aspects of life. E is for evaluative. He's a thinker, not a mere reflector of other men's thoughts. He evaluates a situation, makes a decision, and then acts on it. V is that he's verbally talented. His thinking skills are often demonstrated not only during speeches, but in everyday interactions. I is for individualistic. He will choose to do what he believes is right, even if it puts him out of step with others. And N is for nature loving. His love for nature, he loves nature, and he loves nature's God. Kevin, I pray that you will always continue your pursuit of knowledge and of developing your talents to the glory of God. Always remember that you're a special young man because God has called you to do a work for him that no one else can do. And you will find your greatest joy in answering that call.
I'm supposed to talk about Dylan, that just played the cello. They told us to keep it short, so I hope I didn't take that too much to heart. Um, I want to talk to mention two things about Dylan. He was in my music theory class. And uh, this one verse stood out to me. 1 Corinthians 10, 31. Whether therefore ye eat or drink or whatsoever ye do, do all to the glory of God. And when it comes to trying to do your best, I mean, Dylan, you know, the, the measure lines, they're with a ruler perfectly. You know, the handwriting is just very neat and small, but you know, it's just precise. And I think, um, you know, that's one thing that I think is a very good trait. Precision, attention to detail, you know, and just, just doing things right. And the second thing that my wife told me, all you, all you should mention this, is uh, Dylan definitely stands for what he thinks is right, what I think is correct. And I think that's a very important trait, especially nowadays, with uh, every wind of doctrine blowing every direction. Um, and you could say many ways that Dylan is a, let's say, prodigy child. But behind a prodigy student, there's always a prodigy parent. And I like to praise the Homans. Uh, Proverbs 22, 6 says, Train up a child the way that he should go. When he is old, he will not depart from it. I like to say that, you know, there are many parents here that my wife and I, we see as examples. And the Homans, definitely. So I like to affirm you. And, uh, and Dylan, um, as you go to, you know, your, you may come to your age, you don't know, you may come, you know, whatever God leads you, it says, Psalms 127.4, as arrows are in the hand of a mighty man, so are children of the youth. So be a, mar a mighty arrow for God up for our song that we're going to play holy 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 it's you know a hymn that is a wonderful reminder that we serve a holy god and what does holiness mean to set apart yes it's a holy place like the sabbath is a holy sabbath because it is set apart and we have a god that is set apart from us and yet he became one of us it says in john one that he tabernacled among us became one of us and as we play this may he come today to tabernacle among us <laughs> Thank you. 
Good evening, everyone. I'm here to affirm Alex. Alex. <laughs> Alex, if I should describe Alex, especially uh, the year I taught him, it would be by an acronym using his name. Al X, always excited. <laughs> excited about his providential transition to Washita Hills from public school. Excited about the change that God made or was making in his life. Excited about his preaching appointments, preaching appointment opportunities in his local home church and state. Excited about his parents. Excited about his new sister. Excited about fish. <laughs> we'll unravel that in a bit. Al X, always excited. In other words, you have that zeal. You still have it today. Only that, as the river deepens, it tends to get more silent. But if it stops flowing, though, it may begin to become stagnant, and you know what can happen when that's the case. I also notice that you're caring. Beneath the macho exterior of a past Mexican soccer champ hopeful <laughs> is that kind consideration for the hurting and the weak. I don't know if you were just pretending, back to the fish, but I remember how you saved the fish from drowning, from drowning <laughs> in front of the boys, well, beside the boys' dorm in the creek, and even gave a testimony about the fish during one of our prayer meetings. That's compassion. You never hesitate to help your mom with babysitting, at least at church. That's verifiable based on what I have observed. In other words, deep down inside of your heart is that God-inspired zeal and human compassion. That, will, that, that has not been extinguished by the winds of time and trial except by your own choice, if you choose to do so. My encouragement to you, Alex, is this. Never lose your zeal. Never. Desire of Ages, page 329 says, Love for God, zeal for His glory, and love for fallen humanity brought Jesus to earth to suffer and die. This was the controlling power of his life. This principle he bids us adopt. Like Christ, let your zeal for God's glory be sandwiched between love for God and love for others. Let the love of Christ constrain you for the rest of your life. Let it channel your zeal into the direction of true success and joy. Live for God and, and, and for the benefit of humanity, but never, I repeat, never live for self. One of my favorite Bible texts is found in John chapter 15, and it says, You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, and so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will 
give you. Because of this, always be excited. Always, I'll ex, always be excellent. I'll ex, always be an example. Lift the standard high until Jesus comes. Amen. I'll email it to you for COVID reasons. <laughs>
Moses, perhaps, is because my wife and, uh, well, that's going to see an I, actually. Um, my wife shares a similar background with your family heritage, or probably because you are uh, technologically uh, inclined, like myself, that I consider you a lot like the little brother I never had. As such, I hope you'll consider these words, especially to you today, and remember them. Um, I picked a verse in the Bible, a passage in the Bible, that uh, I modified to hopefully be more relevant. Didn't modify it too much, just modernized it. In Romans chapter 12, verses 9 to 18, it says in the Bible, Let love be genuine. Abhor that which is evil. Cling to whatever is good. Be kindly affectioned to each other with brotherly love. In honor, favoring one another. Not sluggish in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patient in hard times, constant in prayer, distributing to the needs of the saints, given to hospitality. Bless them which persecute you. Bless them and don't condemn. Rejoice with them that rejoice, and weep with them that weep. Be of the same mind one to another. Mind not high things, but consider yourself equal to men of low status. Be not wise in your own, in your own eyes, and don't repay anyone evil if they do you evil. Provide things honestly in the sight of everyone, online and offline. If it be possible, as much as lies in your power, live at peace with all men and women. The industry you've chosen is a unique one in comparison with your peers. May you shine as gold and may you be a divine illustration of Christ-like integrity in a world stained with selfishness, greed, and pride, and immorality. May your conscience be clean and your habits be pure before Christ. I want to thank you for being a blessing to me and all of us here. May you walk side by side with the Lord all the days of your life. And may God permit you to be the answer to many people's prayers. These things I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. This piece we played, the, we learned this last year. It took us a long time to learn it because it's the hardest piece that we played. We played it once and COVID-19 hit. <laughs> so... That was it, we thought. And when we got back together, Dailin said, let's play that one, we gotta play it. Well, I have new ringers that had never rung it before and it was our hardest piece. <laughs> but by God's grace, I think it came together, we'll see. But it's a festival overture and I kind of imagine, but it's uh, like heaven. Uh, when we get there, it's gonna be a festival occasion. Why? Because. COVID's past and everything else, sin and sorrow and sickness and suffering and sadness and uh, disease are all finished, and I long for that day.
with Dylene's encouragement, we played that song. <laughs> and I think it came together, you know? I pushed the bell choir to ring. And when Dylene joined the bell choir, um, I put her on the high bells there the second year this last year. She didn't think she could do it. But I believed in her, still do, I think I always will. And uh, she has excelled in ringing those little bells. If you watched her, she has four notes. And if you watch next to her, John, uh, I mean, <laughs> Dylan has eight notes. They, they just do this incredible job that I look at every time and I'm amazed. I think I ring bells, but I couldn't do it. Dylene has set her uh, mind to do something. She does it, although she, in the meantime, says and thinks she can't. But I know she can. Um, I have the privilege of sharing some things about Dylene that has been a blessing to have. Uh, it's been such a blessing to have you here, Dylene. And when Dylene walks into my office or calls me on the phone or says, Mr. Neal, I have a question, I kind of take a deep breath because it's not going to be an easy question. <laughs> it's not going to be a, a minor topic. It's going to be something deep, like, Mr. Neal, how do I know what God's will is for my life and what is righteousness by faith or, or something that is of a uh, earth-shattering nature <laughs> that is deep? Dylene has this deep side, the hunger and thirst for righteousness. This last year, we had a group of students on campus that um, started a year ago in the summertime, as I understand, that made a commitment. They wanted to go all out, no holds barred. A group of seniors led by um, a group of our seniors, Dylene being one of them. And it was such an encouragement to staff to see young people that want to live for God. And Dylene was one of those in that group. And to know and to see the impact that it has made on this campus and in the lives of other students, Dylene, and those that have made that commitment, I know you will have fruit in heaven. Some people say Washita Hills is, it's a bubble. It's not the real world. But you know, there's real souls to be saved at Washita Hills. And uh, Dylene, I know that it has contributed to that work on our campus through her commitment this last year to try to live for God. And it culminated in her baptism today. And I know other students have been impacted by that. Dylene also has had, uh, you've had incredible excellence in academics. That 99.9 percent, she'll be in my office arguing for that 0.9 percent to get 100 percent on the test, <laughs> maybe 105 percent on the test after I was over arguing the extra credit too. But um, she had a striving for excellence. I don't know in the history of my teaching anyway that I have had anybody take a class of mine that she didn't have to. She already had taken a history, but when she came here, she wanted to take it all over again in my class. <laughs> and she did. And my classes, most students will say, are not easy. They're not a pushover. Um, I think the students enjoy them. At least I enjoy the students. I hope it's mutual. But Dylene took it simply because she had a thirst for it and wanted to learn. And Dylene, for you, you, I have seen that you have this thirst for learning. You want to know everything about everything. And you don't aim for the minimum. You're, you don't, you, you do your maximum. And on every test, you were the last person taking it just about <laughs> because you were trying your best. And that will do and take you, uh, do for you great things and will take you far. And bell choir for introductions, when I've given you introductions, you're a natural up front, you're comfortable, you like, uh, you like uh, sharing, um, even if it's in Spanish, translating, um, last minute introductions, I'll say Dylene's going to introduce this song and hand you the microphone, and I don't know what you're going to say, but, and you always stress over it, I don't know what I'm going to say either, but then you say something and it's profound and it's like, wow, that was a good introduction. <laughs> 
So God has given you a gift at speaking, at sharing Him with others, and I, I trust you're going to use that. There's one quality about you, Dylene, that I think all of us as students and staff would recognize, though, that you do have a, this stubborn streak that uh, might be termed determination, betterly or aptly put as determination. Um, you chose to come to Washita Hills, but it was only going to be for one year, all right? Everybody knew it. This was your goal. You had other plans for life. You had your life mapped out, and this one year was, uh, was here, right? <laughs> and um, not knowing what the future holds is, is a hard thing for Dylene. She loves to have everything figured out and mapped out. And through the course of Washita Hills, there has been a transformation, I think, in this area in your life because there have been a lot of changes to those plans along the way. And that determination has quavered a little bit as you realize that God had other plans for you. And then that was uncertain, unsettling for you. Um, to not know and not have your life planned out with such great certainty in the rest of your life. But God was growing you into trust in Him and by faith rather than a perfect knowledge of the future and a perfect knowledge of His will. And I know this summer you have struggled trying to know what God is will for next year. And you've been on that journey again of uncertainty and of change. And um, I think, though, that that stubborn determination is an incredible quality. You know, Mary and Martha, we often think Martha sits at the feet, but Mary was the diligent, stubborn one who was doggedly serving and working. And we are told in the Desire of Ages that let determination, promptness, and energy... Uh, be sanctified by the grace of Christ, then the life will be an unconquerable power for good. And uh, Dylene, I pray that that determination, that diligence and promptness and energy, uh, that desire to have things planned out and to get it all figured out and serve will be an unconquerable power for good as it is transformed by the grace of Christ. I know you've had challenges in your life it hasn't been an easy road. You've faced many different circumstances that you didn't choose and didn't wish to. And you do have a, a strong strength of character that God is going to rise you above those challenges. And I know, Dylene, that you desire to know Christ. You have this thirst and knowledge for Him. And we are told in the Desire of Ages that to know Him is to love Him. And it is my prayer, Dylene, that as you go on to the next stage where that is, where God is leading you, that that thirst for knowing God would deepen into the most incredible love for Him that fills your heart, your life, and continues to overflow to your fellow men as it has here at Washita Hills. Thank you. This song is actually entitled... Um, you're the father that I always dreamed of. And, well, um, it's going to be in Spanish, but it's, it's really like it's talking to God. And it's showing that, you know, um, telling God that, you know, that he is the father that, you know, that I always dreamed of. That he was there with me as a father caring for me. And everything and you know although sometimes our earthly fathers and parents whatever may fail us God will not fail us and that's such a beautiful thing um, uh, and tonight I'm going to sing um, El Padre Que Siempre Soñé Antes de verme nacer, tu palabra me hizo saber de las cosas tan hermosas que creaste para mí. Es asombroso que en tus planes me encontrara yo, alcanzando tus propósitos. En mi vida puedo a diario ver que marcas el camino. Estás conmigo. Desde la noche hasta el amanecer 
Cada momento he podido ver que tu favor me guía A cumplir lo que tú quieres para mí Y eres el padre que siempre soñé Mi amor eterno, mi razón de ser, mi dulce compañía A uno de mis días eres el padre que siempre soñé Estás conmigo a pesar de los errores que sabes bien pudiera cometer Me ayudas a permanecer de pie ante la vida Y estás conmigo desde la noche hasta el amanecer Cada momento he podido ver que tu favor me guía A cumplir lo que tú quieres para mí y eres el padre que siempre soñé Mi amor eterno, mi razón de ser Mi dulce compañía Uno de mis días Eres el padre que siempre soñé Estás conmigo Desde la noche hasta el amanecer Cada momento he podido ver Que tu favor me guía Cumplir lo que tú quieres para mí Y eres el padre que siempre soñé Mi amor eterno, mi razón de ser Mi dulce compañía Cada uno de mis días Eres el padre que siempre soñé Happy Sabbath, everyone. Um, you know, as I worked as a dean, um, God has been really good to me. Um, he has given me some wonderful girls. And I really, really give God thanks that um, we grew together. And um, I can especially thank God for Daniela. I remember the first time I met Daniela. She was with the trio, Linda, Gabby, and they were charging into the dorm. <laughs> Welcome, girls. You know, but, you know, while Daniela kept that um, friendship alive with the trio, she really blossomed and um, she really bloomed. Um, Daniela became a friend to all the girls in the dorm. Even when the, when the freshmen came, um, she knew how to kind of really get into their corner, you know, and become a friend. Um, and that takes real skill and real love. Um, she became a confidant, a counselor. She was a good listener, I think she still is. She had a humble and tactful way of disarming conflict. And that was a tremendous blessing in a girl's dorm. All will say that Daniela is very fashionable. Daniela would almost have a package coming every week and every one of the packages, she was quite excited about it. I'm like, again, Daniela? But you know, Daniela was not just fashionable on the outside. She was fashionable on the inside. Um, she really wanted to grow for Christ, and she did. Her desire to be like Jesus, to walk and talk with Jesus, was not just evident to me, but to all the girls in the dorm. I remember when we have our worship session, and we'll just have girls talk. And you know, everyone would say, Daniela has grown so much. And I really could see the, you know, the little Daniela to a more mature, and spiritual young lady. Um, I would hear the girls sometimes say different words, some weird words, and one of their words were fake with it. <laughs> but not so with Daniela. Daniela was who Daniela was. She was the real deal. Um, Daniela was really genuine. You know, whatever Daniela said behind your back, she could say in front of you. And as I said, she had a tactful and loving way of actually doing it, even when it was unpleasant. And I found that to be a great blessing to me and to the girls. Um, Daniela also realized her weakness. And um, she realized where Christ has taken her from. And she was so thankful to be at OHA. Um, I can never recall Daniela just being out of it 
you know, in terms of OHE. She was always so thankful. She was so thankful to be here. She was so thankful for her teacher. She just really, she really had a thankful spirit. Maybe she did it behind my back, I don't know. But she always had a thankful spirit. And that was a tremendous blessing just to hear Daniela talk about OHE. And, you know, she was just Daniela. I find her to be a very happy person. Um, she had a way of just having a sunny side. And she had a way of dealing with stress as a youth. As a young lady dealing with stress, she, I never see her like gloom in a corner. Um, she would come and talk with me or she would talk with her girls. But she had a good way of really dealing with stress in a balanced way. And that, again, was a blessing. Uh, the first year Daniela came, she had a roommate. The first semester, the second semester. And so I thought the senior year, it would be good for her to just to be by herself. But not so. At last came Gabby. And it's amazing to see, even though Gabby was her cousin, that they had a wonderful time together. Um, a time together sometime. But even then, you know, Daniela didn't just say, oh, it's my cousin, you know, you know, I have to live with her. I, even when they had conflicts, I saw how Daniela came aside. And um, at one point, I separated them. And she said, Mrs. Reed, you know, I have to learn to live with my cousin here because if we can't live here, we can't live up there. And so that was a blessing. I said, okay, Daniel, you have it under control. She said, I got it. And they did have it. The second semester was a tremendous blessing. Um, Daniela's room was like the hub of the dorm. You know, if you, anytime you go, the girls are always there. And they would be chit-chatting because Daniela was one you could really talk to. I remember when she left for India, um, the girls would constantly say, I miss Daniela. When is she coming? I miss Daniela. And when she came, it was a tremendous blessing. Um, Daniela, I want to tell you thanks for for allowing God to lead you to OHA. Thanks for being our RA. Thanks for your smiles and laughters. Thanks for crying when we cried. Thanks just for sharing um, your experience with us in the dorm. Um, I will really miss you greatly. I must say I've grown to love and appreciate you very much. I remember one class Daniel was taking this um, last, well, this semester, this past semester. Um, I don't remember what it was, but it, they were reading Adventist home, and um, she grew in that society, you know, in terms of what a relationship should constitute, and we will have talks together, and I could see her really wanting to become an upright lady um, for Christ, even in marriage. I thank you for your willingness to respect my counsels and my recommendations, for stepping in when I needed help, for bringing cheer and happiness to the girls, and for being a genuine person, a gem. As you go forward, I want you to remember always, always, Daniela, please, take time to be holy. Take time to read the Bible. That is very important. And also the spirit of prophecy. Take time to pray, asking God to allow you to be um, one among that army of youth, rightly trained to finish the work, because we're nearing home. All right? May God continue to bless you as you continue to seek to shine for him.
Caleb, I wish I could have had you as a student longer than one year. <laughs> but there are several things I observed about you in the time we did share. You have a keen desire to master a challenge. I remember in consumer math, as we slogged our way through all of those formulas and all those crazy math things, you would wrestle with those problems until you conquered them. You didn't just want to know the answer, you wanted to know how and why and be able to replicate it again. And if it took you a while, you'd do it. <laughs> Understanding and mastery were your goals. And this is something I hope that you will take with you into anything new you learn. I could very easily see you being a successful businessman, businessman with those same formulas someday. It would not surprise me. You always showed your work in consumer math problems in detail. And this might seem like a, a minor thing, but I believe it's a sign of a workman who is not ashamed of his work or his methods. And it was like seeing a picture of your mind. And it was very helpful when it came to that first big test, when everything was based on that first problem. <laughs> and I could at least see the steps that you took. You are very prompt. It was not often that you were not one of the first in my classroom. You were diligent with your homework. I could always count on you to turn in the assignments on time, even ones that most everyone else had forgotten. And I really appreciated that. I know your journey with the English as a second language has proved challenging, yet you have persevered. You know when to ask for help, and you always strove to improve. And I am proud of what you have accomplished in your time here. I can tell that you have a sense of humor and creativity, although I didn't always see that in the classroom because you're often very quiet. You are quiet, but you have deep thoughts. Your topics for essays and speeches were always unique and very truly Caleb. You have grappled with some of life's toughest questions and the meaning to life. As you said in your senior speech, you have been called to walk in the light not fearing what others may say or think, not fearing of what may be revealed in that light, even about yourself. Because in that light stands one who loves you more than himself and will continue to give your meaning to life and the purpose to life. With Jesus, you can face the challenges and certainties of the future we now face with peace in your heart, knowing you will make a difference. It has been a pleasure to teach you, Caleb Yee, Go ye, therefore, and teach all nations what you have learned. Practice and live that knowledge that you have gained here at OHA. And I look forward to seeing where God will lead you and what you will do. I'd like to invite the bell choir to come back up. We have a traditional song as Ringers of Hope Bell Choir um, that we play at the end of all of our concerts as we have this hope that burns within our hearts. Hope in the coming of the Lord. We have this faith that Christ alone imparts. So I invite you to come up, and we're going to play it through once, and then I'd like you to sing. One day soon, we're not going to have to say congratulations, farewell. <laughs> As we have graduation, the seniors leave. You get to know them four years, and then they all leave. It's always hard. Graduations are bittersweet. They are joyous, sad. <laughs> because some students won't be here. Um, and so, but we know that as Christians, we have hope. And uh, one day when he comes back, we will be able to again have fellowship with our, our loved ones that we have spent time with here on earth with each of them. And so we're going to play it once, and then I want you to sing hymn number 214, We Have This Hope. <laughs> They're brothers in crime. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he mastered this. Watch him, please. I mean, he's the first person to master this that I have ever known in history. I don't know anybody that has learned to ring a whole octave in two hands. I didn't know it could be done. I've never known any other bell choir that has done it. And then his brother followed suit and mastered it, and it's an incredible heart. But he hasn't even practiced this. So it has been at least, how many years, Jonathan? Three? At least three years. Two years, two, two years, plus, you know, the, anyway, we'll see how it goes. <laughs>
Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we praise you because every single one of these gifts that we have um, uh, affirmed these students with, you are the one who gave them. So we pray that you will continue for these, um, to train and grow each one of these students in these gifts that you have given and that you will bless them and bless us as we go. Help us to remember to keep the Sabbath holy today. In Jesus' name, amen. We are so pleased that you could join us for this special event here at Wachita Hills Academy and College. If you've enjoyed this presentation as much as I have, you can go ahead and like, share, and subscribe to this YouTube channel. Also, if you'd like to support making programs such as these, you can find donation information in the description below. Thank you so much again for joining us, and may God richly bless you.